Good morning and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. So today's book we're going to be talking about The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. Now I never read anything by N.K. Jemison before. Brand new book, brand new author, all that good stuff. Always a bit of a risk when reading a new author because you never know what your impressions of the first time you read a particular author is. And many authors are great writers, but have that one book that just isn't all that good. So there's always that risk that that first impression won't go over well. But I have to say, I'm really, really glad that I picked up the Broken Earth trilogy. Because that this first impression of N.K. Jemison is just awesome. So just give, give an idea about the whole Broken Earth trilogy. It's really, really good. First of all, I just want to say I really enjoyed it. This is a book about this world where earthquakes rule the world, essentially. Uh, and it's ironic because the name of the continent, the single continent, is simply referred to as the stillness, uh, which is kind of, kind of ironic in a way because this is a world that is ruled by earthquakes. Uh, and that really, really kind of contradicts the whole idea there. So in this world... Uh, we've got some really great world building that goes on within the whole construct of the story. This idea of uh, a world ruled by earthquakes, a single continent that suffers from what they refer to as seasons. These are these periods that basically put the very survival of mankind to the brink of extinction. And uh, there's been several seasons in the past, and now we're on the verge of the fifth season, the fifth time that this has happened. Uh, and seasons are a result of all kinds of natural disasters, major earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, causing effectively an ash winter, blocking out sunlight, uh, all kinds of natural disasters that could result from that. So there's some really great world building aspect to this book uh, and to this whole world that's been created. I, I One thing I really, really like about this as well is... The whole magic system is really fascinating in the way the magic system is built within this book. So essentially what happens is within this book, magic is derived from the actual power uh, and forces of nature themselves. So they derive the energy necessary by sucking the heat and converting that into magical energy uh, for, for the system itself. And those who could use um, magic, there's different types of magical elements uh, the main ones being the origins who have the ability to manipulate the mantle and crust of the earth uh, as well as the tectonic plates and using the natural energy composed within the physical structure of the world itself to fuel that power to either still earthquakes and prevent them from happening altogether or using that power and force to cause the earthquakes and bring them, make them happen, which oftentimes causes or triggers one of these periods of time referred to as a season. So we've got the origins with this awesome power, and as a result, they are often very mistrusted. They are feared, and people will often cast them out, which kind of leads to this, uh, the whole way society is organized, as it is organized into castes and comms, so community being or a calm just being short-term for a community. And communities only accept those who have a usefulness, who can contribute to society. So there's the calm less. These are people that are deemed not useful, not worthwhile, and not worth the energy to support. And they're basically the homeless vagabonds running wild in the outskirts of, of civilization. Uh, and within each community, there's these different castes or this caste system which um, is divided into different uses. Uh, so you could be in the leadership caste or the uh, metalworking caste, or you could be in the breeder caste, where, which your entire purpose is just to create people. Uh, essentially the breeder caste and things like that. It could be essentially thought of as nothing more than sexual slavery. Their job is to breed, and that is why they are the breeder caste within this world. The origins themselves are also kind of stuck within this system. Uh, and they have a school referred to as the fulcrum. 
uh, and within the fulcrum they're tightly controlled and uh, it is a very very tightly controlled system within the fulcrum you have a hierarchy and everyone below below a certain level or any if anyone's below you they kind of have to follow you and you can you are controlled you're manipulated you're told where to go what to do and it's all part of your training to be a full orgy unfortunately even the origins themselves sometimes are forced into doing things that they maybe don't want to do kind of the balance to the origin's power are this group of people referred to as the guardians nobody really knows who's in charge of the guardians or if they have any kind of system of governance at all but the guardians effectively have the ability to disrupt the power of the origins so they can disrupt them stop them and effectively control them and they seem to be the controlling force behind the origins in the world they balance that power out and and, and effectively Make sure that origins are not running wild and they haven't gone rogue and wreaking havoc with all their powers. And that, that is kind of a nice little balance to that because I think with any good magic system, th there needs to be something to balance out that magical power. Uh, I don't think magic systems, whether they're all powerful and nothing balanced out, are good things. I think they're inherently flawed, they don't work well, and we need some kind of balance in order to offset one way or other to maintain that balance otherwise it would just be utter chaos within the world that's created and i think that is very very important i do think nk jemison did a really good job creating a magic system and creating that balancing force of of the guardians to offset the power of the origins and i think that was really really good really enjoyed that one of the things i really really liked about this book as well is uh it, it kind of flips between first second and third person narration which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, so essentially we have, within that flipping back and forth as well, is we have a single character that is known throughout the story by three different names, uh, which was really, really cool. So she starts off as Demea. Uh, she is a girl that is basically taken by a guardian to be trained as an origin from a young age. And while she's training and learning at the Fulcrum, she becomes Sainate. Uh, and as she progresses through the levels. Now, the levels within the origin organization or the fulcrum organization are referred to as rings. Uh, so there's up to a maximum of 10 rings. With the more rings you have, the higher level you are. Uh, and so while she is cyanide, she is introduced to the only 10 ringer that the world knows presently, named Alabaster. And basically because the fulcrum wants to always make sure that they have very powerful origins at their disposal alabaster as a ten ringer and cyanide as who is currently a four ringer uh, they are basically forced to breed and forced to be together neither one wants to have a child with the other neither one really particularly likes each other but they're kind of forced into this situation where they have to breed and create a child together so both in a sense are bondage to the whims of the fulcrum and forced into this sexual slavery in order to breed what the fulcrum wants out of them so that was a really fascinating uh, kind of part of the whole story about how despite their significant power their ability to basically manipulate the physical reality of the world through their magic they are still confined and bound by the whims of the fulcrum and forced by the guardians to do their bidding so it's just really really kind of fascinating aspect of the story that even the most powerful uh, are effectively a bondage to their power and the, those who can con those who ultimately control that power just really really great aspect of the story one of the aspects i'm really enjoying about this whole story as well um and then after complete disaster uh happens um what we have here is cyanide becomes eason and finds herself and starts a new life for herself yet again in a new town and that is just really interesting because it actually starts with the story of eason late late in her later in her life 
And we see what happens initially when she loses her son, she loses her husband and daughter, and she has to go seek and find them. And so it kind of flips back and forth between the different stages of her life to kind of give us a full comprehensive view of this story as a whole, which I thought was really, really awesome. Now, now some of the other things that I, about the whole world building as well, just jumping back to that for a minute, is there's really a lot in this book that suggests that the culture of this world is in a semi-modern setting. Uh, so we have roads that are described as being paved. We have mention of electricity and lights. There's also these mysterious things that seem to orbit the world called obelisks. And these obelisks seem to be kind of these remnants of a more ancient civilization as well. But they seem to be these uh, things that are in this low earth orbit. Uh, nobody really knows what they are, what they do, why they're there, but definitely they are not something of a of the modern technology of the world. They are, in fact, a mystery uh, of what these things are. We learn a little bit more about the obelisk, and I don't want to say much because I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read it, but we definitely learn a little bit more of the obelisk, what they're doing, where they're going why they're there and what ultimately their purpose is. Not the full details, but we do learn a little bit more about, so that's really interesting uh, with respect to that and kind of how there's these hints dropped of a modern world and yet kind of has the feel of a not quite modern world as well, so kind of a mix of the both. Some of the things I really enjoyed about this whole series is I loved how some of the characters in this book, we have Tonky, she seems to be this trans woman character of mysterious origins. We don't know much about her, where she is, where she came from. Uh, but she eventually leads uh, Eason to a underground calm, essentially, which would seem impossible to exist. Nobody really knows uh, how it exists. It just seems to exist. The people living there themselves didn't build it, but it seems impossible. Uh, so I expect to learn much more about that and the origins of this mysterious underground calm that shouldn't exist in the next book. Really looking forward to that. I love how they just how this has these types of characters of both uh, bi, um, bi characters and trans characters without getting really in your face about it. I really like that. One of the other aspects that I enjoyed about this book is the reference to the religious culture of uh, this world, uh, often referred to as stone lore. So this is basically the religion. It's all about the crust and the stone and the makeup of the earth and the, the stone lore being the wisdom and guidance we, this world receives from the stone or from the earth uh, in that sense. And at the end of every chapter, it kind of ends with a quote essentially from stone lore and the advice and how to live and how people should be. And it's just this whole world and religion built up around the Stone Lord. It's just really, really awesome. And I'm really enjoying this series. By far, I'd have to say, one of the best fantasy series I have read thus far in a long time. Uh, maybe not best fantasy series I've read thus far, but definitely one of the best I've read in a long, long time. Really enjoying it. Loving the series. And I really, really highly recommend this series of books, especially if you are a fantasy fan, you've got to read this. Highly, highly recommend it. Absolutely loving it. I think it's a great, great book and well written. And so those are just some of my thoughts on the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. And of course, as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching and don't stop reading. Bye.